I will struggle. I will fight. I want to stay alive. My mom got a call home from my teacher one day, shortly after I started kindergarten. I was already suffering from severe social anxiety and sensory overstimulation, which made it hard to make friends, since I took offense to everyone and everything. So what did my mom do when she received the call? She ignored it because she thought it wasn't anything serious. Unlike, for instance, if I got in a call home because of bad grades. This taught me that mental health was a non-existent concept in our family. And naturally, what did six-year-old me do when I heard that my teacher had called my mom and told her bad things about me? I skipped school the next day because I didn't want to be around somebody who I thought hated me. Clearly, I did not learn how to properly deal with my mental health or confront my fears from my mother. I was the one that figured out that I had anxiety, mainly through AP psychology class and Reddit. <laughs> Once I went away to undergrad, I had the confidence and safety of a two and a half hour car ride away from my parents to seek professional help for my declining mental health. Many years later, I was a student in Carnegie Mellon University's Master of Data Science program and was only a few months away from graduation. I had just moved to Pittsburgh and I had accepted my first full-time position in San Diego. I felt that I was doing great and that I was on track for massive success. I had one small issue though. I was losing weight, a lot of weight. I was restricting my diet by going vegan and mostly eating foods prepared by myself. I had been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder in the past and had had fluctuations in my weight caused by academic stress. So I just assumed that this was a similar situation and that I would gain back my weight like I always did. Knowing that I needed to continue treatment for my anxiety, I set up an appointment with the university's mental health services department. The day of the appointment came and I logged into my virtual counseling session to speak with the therapist they had paired me with. I went through the PowerPoint presentation of my life that I shared with my new therapist, I'm kidding, and <laughs> sat back, <laughs> wondering what she would suggest for a treatment plan. I think you need a higher level of treatment. It seems that you have a lot of anxiety around eating and that you have some disordered eating habits, not to mention your weight loss. I'm going to schedule you for an intake assessment for the day treatment program for eating disorders. I stared at my screen in shock. The therapist came in and out of focus as I tried to process what she had just said. I started to sweat. I didn't know what day treatment was. I was used to meeting with my therapist once a week for 45 minutes and then forgetting everything we talked about until the next session. <laughs> was day treatment like that? The therapist finally came back into focus and stared at me. My brain cleared enough for me to communicate with her that I would get my physical done and do this intake assessment. The physical was pretty straightforward with some additional fun elements. They weighed me, measured my height, took a bunch of my blood, measured my heart rate, made me pee in a cup, hooked me up to a machine, and used electrical signals to check my heart. I learned that this was called an EKG. The room was freezing cold, since all I was allowed to wear was a hospital gown. It smelled of antiseptic everywhere and the nurses that I interacted with avoided looking at me. 
I was only asked relevant questions for the examination. The severity of it all made me feel very uneasy, like I was about to go into a surgery that had a low success rate. I left the student medical center shaken, thinking that maybe this wasn't just anxiety anymore. I started day treatment soon after the initial shocking, shocking conversation, and it was intense, all right, and absolutely nothing like I expected. In fact, it was so much worse. Honestly, it was even worse than getting my master's. <laughs> my first day of treatment started on a great note by getting my diagnoses. Besides the unsurprising depression and anxiety, the nurse practitioner diagnosed me with anorexia nervosa, restrictive type. Here's the thing. I had researched my symptoms beforehand and had ruled out anorexia because I didn't have body image issues. I actually hated how thin I was. I tried to tell her that I thought the diagnosis was incorrect and that I had avoidant restrictive food intake disorder, also known as ARFID, instead. That led to gaslighting and belittling and being told that ARFID is an eating disorder and you've lost a lot of weight and restrict, so you must have anorexia. I was so frustrated, but I had no leverage because I wasn't the professional here. So anorexia nervosa, restrictive type it was. After that lovely start, I was introduced to the other patients and started going through my schedule for the foreseeable future. Day treatment was five hours of virtual therapy from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. every weekday. It consisted of guided meditation, breakfast, multiple group therapy sessions covering various fun topics such as expressive arts and values and some meh ones like body image and nutrition. Then lunch and finally reflections and guided meditation once again. We also had weekly nutritionist, therapist and psychiatric appointments. I had to log everything I ate in, a food, in my food journal. All meals had to be checked off to make sure we ate all of the food. And if we didn't, we'd get in trouble and get sent to higher levels of care, which for me was full-time residential treatment for six weeks at their campus in Philly. I was constantly in recovery mode. To do this and be a full-time graduate student and work as a part-time intern was exhausting. Besides being constantly fatigued due to my PAC schedule, I also dealt with some physical symptoms that few people like to talk about. Oh yes, and talking about that fun stuff like bloating and IBS. That shit was rough, pun intended. <laughs> My stomach had to re-expand and drink supplements and eat meals three times bigger than I'd grown accustomed to eating since we were expected to pack on two pounds per week. I felt physically sick more often than not made lots of runs to the bathroom, and had so many anxiety attacks. I was scared I was going to have to drop out of school and go to residential treatment, or possibly never get better. I couldn't believe how low I'd gotten, and to be so young, to be going through something as terrible as this. Luckily, 
I leaned into my competitive and overachieving CMU graduate student persona <laughs> and didn't just get through treatment. I fucking won at treatment. <laughs> I completed day treatment in the minimum time and dropped down to IOP with the highest honor, not having my meals checked off anymore. I had the Fru crew, AKA the other patients, who became my newfound family. We understood the worst and most embarrassing parts of each other. We cheered each other on to finish that last bite of food and checked up on each other often. We've met up for food post-treatment. I even went on vacation with one of them recently. And it was so touching and such a proud moment to get breakfast together on the last day of the trip. Her with banana pancakes drenched with maple syrup, me with peanut butter pancakes with maple syrup, and to finish our meals. They were always there for me while my own mother wasn't. It's been two and a half years since treatment. I haven't had an anxiety attack in over a year. I went from being vegan during treatment back to enjoying the joys of dairy, mainly cheese, <laughs> as a vegetarian. My anxiety and depression in general have gotten so much better. I've shared my story with others and helped them seek help for their disordered eating habits. Sometimes I don't recognize the woman that I am today and that makes me smile. Granted, I still have a ways to go, but I feel the best that I've felt in a long time. I've learned that I need to be kind to myself and believe that I am my best resource to be able to overcome whatever difficulties life throws at me. Oh, and my favorite part of it all, I was actually diagnosed with ORFID instead when I moved out to San Diego by multiple mental health professionals. Take that, nurse practitioner. I got really into poetry when I was in treatment and I found it to be very helpful for processing my emotions and malicious thoughts. I wrote many poems, but one of my favorite passages was an excerpt from one titled The Wagon of, the Wagon of Misfits. I will struggle. I will fight. I want to stay alive. Not just with my head swimming, not just with my head above water, but swimming powerfully with the strength that I know I have. Now let me tell you, my backstroke is killing it today, y'all. All right, Vamp first timer, Pasqua Ruggiero.